Well, howdy, Houston. It's your old pal, Brisket McGraw. This morning, we've got a couple brainy Houstonians who have been helping Baldwin men out of a hairy situation. Sean Applewhite and his mother, Margaret. Welcome to the show. <laughs> hairy situation. That's priceless. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. It's so nice of you to be here to support your son. Now, Sean. You've invented this new thing called Revitalize that people all around the country are going absolutely bananas about. Now, does it really permanently cure male pattern hair loss? You've heard right, Brisket. Yeah. Anyone who uses Revitalize will have their hair growth completely restored for the rest of their life. You only need to use it once. Well, gosh, you must have raised yourself a, a, a wonderkind child genius or something over there, Margaret. Sean's 32 years old. Might have missed the boat on the wonderkind, but thanks. By now, you're probably sick of hearing about how Sean and Margaret Applewhite have changed the world with their incredible product, Revitalize. How they made millions selling miracle Grow for your head. You probably remember something about a fire. Something about a hostage negotiation. Something about squirrels, maybe? You've probably even heard another podcast about these people and only come away with a tiny portion of the truth. Well, that's because there's a story released to the public and then there's the reality of what happened, a reality I was present for. My name's Francine Cunningham, independent reporter and former employee of Revitalize. This is Battle of the Bald. Episode one. Lab Rats. Our story begins in Houston, Texas, birthplace of NASA and Beyonce. Known as the energy capital of the world, it's a city too caught up in commerce to care much about tourism. It's also incredibly humid and floods just about every hurricane season, but it's home. On the outskirts of town laid a little office park that was home to Donovan Research Facilities. Not a fancy place by any means. But in March of 2018, in one of Donovan's cramped, sterile lab rooms, the incredible discovery of what would come to be called Revitalize was about to be made. We've been open a couple of years and I, I was the manager of the place. This is Charles Donovan. Private research teams would come in and basically rent out the space with whatever grant money they got. Mostly weird shit that didn't go nowhere, to be honest. <sighs> Had a guy that wanted to do brain scans on squirrels. Not sure it would be so interesting about their thoughts. Another team was doing sleep studies, or so they claimed. Pretty sure I heard some hanky-panky going on. But one day, a new team moved in. A mother and son. The world-famous Applewhites. Well, not the time they weren't. This is Sean and Margaret again, talking to Brisket McGraw on, well, howdy, Houston. What was it like in those early days in the laboratory, you guys? Well, obviously, as someone who has experienced hair loss myself, I was pretty passionate about finding a solution. But it wasn't just about me. I poured my blood, sweat, and tears into that lab because millions of other men were suffering just like me. Dang. So your brain was just overflowing with innovation in there, huh? I mean, I don't like to brag about myself. That's why I brought my mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay then, Margaret, what was it like to bear witness to a mind like your son's? In a word, unbelievable. The company had painted Sean as an army of one. A once in a generation level of brilliance. So here's where I come in. I had recently graduated from the University of Houston with a journalism degree. And since I had a mountain of student loans and the job market wasn't exactly booming at the time, I grabbed the first paycheck I could find. I became the receptionist at Revitalize. And the Sean Applewhite that I met in the summer of 2018 was a little different. CEO shit! Attack of the president, guys! He's out of control! Ha <laughs> ha, you got me. This is the sound of Sean running down the hall with a t-shirt cannon shooting his employees with free t-shirts that display his own face as they try to get work done. What's up, Cheryl? I happen to notice you don't have an official revitalized ah! t-shirt. <laughs> now you do. 
Sorry about your coffee. Sean would also hold impromptu dance competitions in the break room, which he called... Twerking hard or hardly twerking? <laughs> twerking hard, sir. At a boy, shake that ass, shake that ass. But uh, <clears throat> not in exchange for a raise because that would be grounds for a lawsuit. Just want to remind everyone once again that this is strictly for fun and exercise. Can I go back to my desk, please? In a minute, Kyle. While I was receptionist at Revitalize, Sean went through probably 12 personal assistants, all women. Many of them quit without notice. Some lasted for a whole month, but by the end of their tenure, without fail, their eyes were empty, their energy stolen away by Sean, the eater of souls. So when Sean needed a fill-in, I was summoned. I was aware of Sean's reputation for being a prick. So I was a little surprised when I went into his office and found his shelf lined with books by writers like Gia Tolentino, Roxane Gay, and Zadie Smith. I was surprised to find books, period. He had a Banksy on the wall of Mickey Mouse strangling the Statue of Liberty. He had photos with Marie Kondo and Megan Rapinoe. Everything was woke to a T. So precisely tuned to latest and greatest open-minded white guyness. And yet... Hey, new assistant. Daphne? This was a voicemail that was waiting for me when I arrived at the assistance desk outside Sean's office for the first time. Sorry I'm breathing like this. I'm just shredding some tread. Prepping for a half mare. Anyway, I'm a celebrity judge at this wet t-shirt competition tonight. I think it's part of the free the nipple movement or something. So I basically just need my tux picked up like, so, ten minutes ago? Make sure both the tux and the pip extra are waiting for me when I get to the office. Oh, also... If you could hit up my storage locker on the west side and pull out a box labeled Fancy Crap, I've got a cummerbund in there that's going to fully complete my get-up tonight. I'll go back with more stuff as needed. Oh, also, I'm going to need you to get me out of a couple traffic tickets pronto. A series of sticky notes were my only welcome to my new temporary position. The first one said, Welcome to Hell. The next one said, The password for everything is Fuck My Life 1992. This is how I gained access to Sean Applewhite's inner life. Because not only was his assistant responsible for his PIP extras and his dry cleaning and a never ending email inbox of interview requests, the assistant also had access to his Cloudbox account where all of his personal media was stored. This is where I stumbled upon a folder of audio files labeled Boring documents. You're overdoing it. I am not. Look at the little guy. He's practically drowning in chemicals. Mom, it's a rat. They normally live in garbage. This is like a rat spa. What formula is that? It's a custom one. Made it myself. I call it Formula Zero. The crazy squirrel guy down the hall inspired me. If that doofus can do science... Sean, Jesus Christ, you aren't a chemist. I told you to keep away. You got a billion of these little things. Don't work. Oh my God! Gross! What's happening to it? You melted the poor thing. I'm not a chemist. What do you expect? Obviously, this is Sean and Margaret, pre-revitalized days, before the money and t-shirt cannons. Come on, you want to sprout some hairs for me, you beautiful bald bastard? I had stumbled upon a motherload of personal audio recorded in Donovan's labs. Sean had kept everything. I just wasn't sure why. And if Sean was a screw up and his mother the true brains of the operation, then why was she standing quietly by his side while he took all the glory? Good morning, my little hairless friends. It's Friday, March 8th, 2018, 7.02 a.m. in humid as hell, Houston, Texas. Today we're going to be starting with Formula 272 and see how it does on you guys. Say good morning, Sean. Uh, is it though? The goal was simple yet ambitious. Find a permanent fix for hair loss. Male pattern baldness, female pattern baldness, alopecia, any type of hair loss. To do this, they were testing various formulas on the backs of hairless rats. Careful. Sean, you don't have to smother them in the stuff. They're living things. Wait, what? These things are alive? I had no idea. Wow. They are your bald brethren. You're finally giving me siblings? Ah. Thanks, Mom. Oh, by the way, Sean is balding. 
kind of a crucial detail, to be honest. It comes up a lot. This morning we'll be testing Formula 712 in order to cure my son's horrendous and ever-expanding bald spot. Okay, that's not how scientists talk. I'm only teasing. Genetically speaking, this shit's your fault. That has been debunked. Your father contributed plenty. Well, he didn't stick around long enough for me to give him shit about it. Let's just test this stupid formula already. You might be thinking at this point, okay, so what? So the multi-millionaire entrepreneur has some mommy issues and has a childish attitude and fibbed about being able to concoct his miracle formula all on his own. Ethically questionable, but is there a crime here? Well, let's skip ahead to the big day. Good morning, everyone. Today we'll be testing Formula 912, 913, and 914. Wait, we're doing three today? That's what I just said. Well, I gotta skip out early. Skip out? For what? Why does that matter? It matters because I'm asking and I'm your boss. Also, I let you go home early last week because of some video game release. So sue me for having a cool life. I have a date tonight, alright? You have a date? Why are you saying it like that? That was a mean emphasis. Because you don't go on dates. You're such a liar. Yeah, I do. I've been using a dating app. See? Look. (laughs) Why does your profile say you have a degree in engineering? Because dating app bios are like vision boards. I'm not sure that's true. If you haven't accomplished anything in life yet, women like to know you intend to at some point. Yeah, that's the same as what you're doing. Sean Applewhite, the fake-it-till-you-make-it dating guru. Whatever. We hit it off. Look, here's our whole conversation. Here's her photos. Oh, she is way too hot. You're gonna get there and some burly Russian dude named Vlad is gonna throw a bag over your head. <sighs> Shut up. I'm sorry, but we are in the pursuit of something important and have been seeing a lot of progress. (laughs) What? The two little sprouts on rat number who gives a shit back? Scientific progress moves at a snail's pace, Sean. It requires rigor and attention. If you're constantly jetting off early to go disappoint some stranger, we're never going to get anywhere. I'm sorry, that was harsh. It's just, have you considered that a breakthrough in this lab will have direct positive effects on your dating life? Maybe hold off until we've, you know, solved this thing. Right. You're right. I used old pics on my profile anyway. She probably will be a little bummed when she sees me. The tension between Margaret and Sean had been escalating for a while. They were burning through their financing fast and had little to show for it, setting the stage for everything to snap in two. That is the end of row one, finishing up formula 912. Whoa, Mom, are you leaving? Oh yeah, I have the investor meeting, I told you about that. Wait, so I have to stay here all night on a Friday while you go out and get drunk with some suit? This meeting could directly impact our business. It's not some charity date. Just finish applying the formulas and write down the results. Try not to kill anything. Okay, mom of the year, everybody. I'm going to fast forward a little bit more to a point where Sean begins to open up, shall we say. But don't worry, you rat bastards. You're all going to be okay. Big Papa Sean's going to take care of you all. Unlike my mother, who couldn't give two shits about the balds. So mean. I include myself in that category, you know. The balds. It just happened to us. We didn't do nothing to deserve this, but that's not how people act about it, right? You're bald! You're bald! You're bald! It's like an accusation of something. Look what you've done to yourself! Besides the time I happened upon this audio, you are the first to hear what Sean was really up to this night. Drunk off his ass, stumbling around a laboratory full of rats, experimenting with three of his mother's formulas. So just for contrast... I'd like to splice it together with another version of this Friday night. So tell us about that fateful evening in the lab if you could, Sean. Don't mind if I do. Well, you know, I had been tinkering around in our little laboratory with my mother all day when I let her go home for the day. How kind of you. 
She used to do a ton of cardiovascular research back in yesteryear, but I didn't want her to have to work those kind of hours anymore. Little rats get thirsty too, yeah? Squirmy, squirm, squirm. I'm gonna name you Randy. Randy the Rat. How about that for empowerment? You have a name now. So I had my checklist and diligently went through everything. No stone unturned. You put in the work. I put in the work. Couldn't have said it better myself. Elbow grease and dedication. <laughs> Maybe you fellas deserve a little vodka yourself, eh? Thirsty Thursday, got schedule on Friday this week, am I right? Had to reschedule because people weren't... Whoa, Randy? And then it happened. Randy the Rat, within a matter of 60 seconds, was covered in hair. Oh, shit! Fuck you, Mom! Take that! I believe my exact words were, Eureka, this is going to change so much for so many. Wow. So eloquent just in the moment. It has poetry to it, right? We actually have t-shirts with that on it. Formula 912 plus Chet's cheap ass vodka bitches. That's the winning combo right there, baby cake. Sean was plastered. The troubled son of a bona fide researcher stuck with the late shift on a Friday who had just stumbled upon a miracle. And he was about to test that miracle on himself. Okay. Everybody, what we're gonna do right here now, pour a whole lot of this stuff all over Sean Applewhite's bare ass noggin. And Sean Applewhite is me. Oh my god. That was like the ice bucket challenge. But different. Normally, a team of researchers would attempt to replicate their findings with a second lab rat, and then a third, and then a fourth and then maybe attempt it on another non-human subject before going to human trials. But, as we now know, Sean Applewhite wasn't exactly a researcher at all. I see some hairs. I see a bunch of hairs. Oh, hell yeah! Woo! The formula worked. The world would change and bow before its latest self-made, out-of-the-blue mega-millionaire. We sure do love an underdog story. Next time on Battle of the Bald, the unintended consequences of solving a problem for sad men. You've got to get yourself a can of Revitalize. Bitches, here I come. You know what I mean? And I decide to pay a visit to the oddly quiet Margaret Applewhite. Battle of the Bald was written and produced by Tyler Eaton, who was me. The whole series was safely recorded during quarantine, mostly in people's closets via Zoom, and in the studio at Pinecraft Loft. This episode featured voice acting from Rebecca Usoro, Connor Cacciatolo, Jackie Cation, Brandon Rahman, John Yabez, Lauren Gilbert, and myself. Our thumbnail artwork was done by Ethan Marler. A new episode will be out every Monday between now and February 8th. I'd really appreciate it if you shared the show with your friends, especially the bald ones, and maybe leave us a review to help us bring in more listeners. You know, if you, if you liked it. If you want to find out more about the show, check out tylereaton.net or find us on Instagram at Battle of the Bald. Thanks for listening. <laughs>